Welcome to Broadway Church Online. We are so glad you've joined us today. My name is Victor and you have joined us on week one of our new series, Counterfeit Jesus, where we discover all the false views of Jesus that there are out there and how they differ from one true Jesus. Pastor Darren will be sharing a message from God's Word a little later, but before we continue, I would love for you to share this video as it really does help spread what God is doing here at Broadway Church. And if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, we encourage you to do this now and you'll always be in the loop with all that's going on here at Broadway. If you happen to miss last week's message, Pastor Darren spoke on Easter Sunday about the evidence that we have for the resurrection of Jesus. Check out this clip. What sets the story of Jesus apart from a Marvel comic book? The answer is simple. The historical records and the eyewitness testimony. Now, over the last few moments, we've been answering the what questions. What happened? What evidence do we have? But we have not answered the why question. Why did it happen? Why was Jesus crucified? Why did Jesus rise from the dead? And the answer to that is in my need, in your need, my problem and your problem, my sin, your sin. That's what the gospel is all about. It's the good news. See, the bad news is that my sin separates me from God and there's nothing I can do to remove my sin. The good news is Jesus came as a sinless person, God in flesh, and he came to, to cleanse us from our sin. And then he rose from the dead, triumphing over the grave, triumphing over sin, defeating the power of sin and death, and then offering you and I the gift of eternal life. If you want to hear the full message, you can go to our website where we have the entire sermon available for you. Now, in just a few moments, the worship team is going to come and lead us into a time of worship. But before that happens, why don't you check out some of the things that are coming up here at Broadway? Hey Broadway, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Desiree and I am one of the pastors here. And as you guys can see, we have a very special guest with us today. So why don't you go ahead and tell us who you are and what you do around here? Um, my name is Hannah Vicente and I'm one of the youth students here at Broadway as well, one of the student leads. Amazing, and Hannah, how long have you been attending Broadway? I've been going to Broadway for my whole life. Your whole life, since you were a little baby? Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Well, thank you for being here. And Broadway, we have a ton of stuff happening here for you and your families. So why don't you check these things out? Alpha is a 10-week course designed for you to explore life, faith, and God in a fun and safe environment. Attending Alpha is different. Yep, there is no pressure, no follow-up, and no charge unless you want to pay for the optional meal beforehand. If you want to explore Christianity with us, please register online. The course began last week, but it is not too late to join. Broadway Fitness is a free class that will take place on Tuesday nights at the Port Coquitlam campus. Make sure to bring a water bottle and wear clothes that let you move and sweat. This is a great opportunity to invite a friend, neighbor, or family member to connect with our church. Register online. Kids Church in Vancouver is growing a lot and we need your help. We're looking for people to serve in all roles, both at our Sunday morning services and our Wednesday night kids club. We're also looking for people who have a heart to serve children with disabilities as part of our Broadway Buddies team. And don't worry, you don't have to teach or be in front of the class for this volunteer role. Calling all men. If you have been looking to build strong friendships with other men, this event is for you. On April 13th, we're going to be having our men's breakfast. Join us for an amazing breakfast with tofu bacon and turkey bacon. Just kidding, there's gonna be real bacon and afterwards we're going to have an optional dodgeball tournament. The best part is that the breakfast only costs $12. You can register online at the Automated Giving Center. On April 11th at our Vancouver campus, our young adults are having a community night and the theme is Throwback Thursday. Come dress as your childhood self or in a style from the past and join us for an awesome night filled with nostalgic games, a retro photo booth and lots of time to connect with other young adults. We're also providing a full meal, so please register and pay on the website. All young adults from all campuses are invited. We are hiring. We are looking for a full-time pastor at our Port Coquitlam campus. This person will be in charge of overseeing our worship and tech ministry and will be involved in the day-to-day -day ministries of the church, including community outreach. If this role interests you, please check out the job description on the website under the Join Our Team tab. 
If you miss anything that we said, you can always visit our website, broadwaychurch.com, for more information on all of our ministries and events. And while you're there, make sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Now, it's almost time for us to worship, but first, I want to read to you a short passage to prepare our hearts for what God wants to do in this moment. It comes from 2 Kings 17, 38 and 39, and it says, Do not forget the covenant I have made with you, and do not worship other gods. Rather, worship your Lord God. It is He who will deliver you from the hand of all your enemies. A lot of us might not find ourselves worshiping other gods necessarily, but we do fall into the trap of putting other things before God. We trust in things that will ultimately fail us and put our hope in circumstances or people instead of having our own hope in the God who has never failed. So in this moment, despite what might be going on in your life right now, let's put all those other things aside and put our trust in the one true God, the one who fulfills his promises, who has delivered us over and over again, and who is deserving of our worship.
So oh. 
welcome to Broadway Church and thank you worship team for leading us in worship today. If you're new to Broadway Church, we would love for you to fill out our digital and touch card. Just scan the QR code on the screen and fill out the form. A pastor will get back to you and help you find answers to your questions about growing in your faith or connecting on Broadway. We're now going to transition into our time of giving. If you're new to Broadway Church, please feel under no obligation to give. You do not have to pay to watch or attend church. However, if you would like to financially support what God is doing here at Broadway, we would love for you to do that now. Our preferred way of giving is for you to go to the Give tab on our website and check out the online banking giving option. We can accept your credit card over the phone if you call the church office. You can come in in person from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. during the week if you want to drop it off. You can also use text to give. If you text the word GIVE to the number on the screen, it'll walk you through the prompts to get set up. Or you can mail checks to the church. We also want to help you by providing some discussion questions based on today's topic immediately after the sermon. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Pastor Darren will be sharing a great message with us in just a moment. But first, why don't you take a moment to subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with what's happening here at Broadway. Thank you once again for joining us today. He's a professional. <laughs> well, hello, Broadway Church. We are diving behind the message here in our upcoming series. And I want to turn it to Pastor Darren. Darren, tell us what the series is that we have coming up. Well, let me put it to you this way, uh, Simon or Lewis? Lewis. Lewis. See, you know, people always mistake you for Simon, right? They, they think you're Simon and they think Simon is Lewis. Well, see, there you go. <laughs> We get you mixed up all the time. And you can, you're kind of the counterfeit Simon, in a sense. Well, what we're doing is, we're doing a series we're calling the Counterfeit Jesus Series. Now, the Counterfeit Jesus Series, we're looking at six versions of Jesus that are not true. They're phony, they're scams, they're false versions of Jesus. They're counterfeit versions of Jesus. Got it. So for six weeks, we're unpacking some of the different maybe truths that can be skewed about Jesus? Like, how does that work? Yeah, over the centuries, like, for example, so we're looking at the everyman Jesus, the, the Jesus who's just like us. He's not really God, he's just a really good human. Then there's the anti-evangelism Jesus, the Jesus who says all religions are the same. And then there's the, the, um, the socialist Jesus who doesn't like money and wealth. And there's the... Uh, Health and wealth Jesus. Health and wealth Jesus, where he's he, he's the opposite. He loves money. He loves all that kind of things. And, and you should never be sick or anything like that. Uh, there's different versions of Jesus that are out there. And we're going to debunk each of those false versions of Jesus. And it's interesting because in each of those false versions, there's a sliver of truth, maybe even more than a sliver of truth in there. Exactly right. So the emphasis each week is not going to so much be on the counterfeit aspect, but on the truth about Jesus that each of these false versions ignore. And so it's really a six week study on the character and the power of the life of Jesus. So we're not going to be, we're using the counterfeit aspects as a reason to look at the real Jesus each week. Very cool. Now, in order for us not to get confused anymore, let me yeah. just, we're gonna point, just like we're gonna eyebrows. point out Give bigger eyebrows. some markers about Jesus. Yes. We're gonna point out some markers about Pastor Simon here. Yeah. And I think, I think that'll look pretty good. Sure. Now, nobody will mistake you anymore. Imagine a Rolex. To some, it's no more than wheels and cogs. But a real Rolex is much more than that. Each part designed, shaped and polished with constant care and countless skills. Taking hundreds of days to come together. However, not every Rolex you see is a real Rolex. There are counterfeits out there. They look like the real thing on the surface, but when you investigate them more closely, they aren't what they appear to be. The same can be true when it comes to perspective on Jesus. There are many versions of Jesus out there that do not measure up to the actual, historical, biblical Jesus. This is where we discover the truth. Weeding out the counterfeits to find the one true Jesus.
Have you ever been the victim of a scam? For example, have you ever fallen for one of those online phishing schemes? Now, that's phishing with a PH, not phishing with an F. You're the target of a phishing scam when you get a phony email or text claiming to be from a bank or maybe Netflix or Amazon, warning you that your account has been compromised or frozen, telling you that you need to click on the link provided in order to resolve the issue. Now, the goal of every phishing scammer is to gain access to your passwords and banking information so that they can steal from you. Now, some of these phishing attempts are really, really bad. By that, I mean some of them are obviously phony. Some of them are full of typos and clearly appear to be written by someone who is not proficient in the English language. Now, when I first began to receive these poorly crafted phishing messages, I used to think to myself, why would a scammer not have their messages proofread by someone before they sent them out? Why would they send something out with so many obvious mistakes? And then I learned that this was intentional. I learned that some phishing emails and texts are poorly written by design. The thinking goes like this. If someone can't figure out from the obvious low quality of the correspondence that it's a scam, then they are the type of person the scammers are looking for. The person that cannot figure out that the Royal Bank would not misspell the word overdrawn in their official notices is the very type of person that a scammer is looking for because they're the type of person that can easily be deceived. So, some phishing attempts are sent out with obvious errors in them as a way of targeting the more gullible amongst us. However, there are other types of phishing attempts out there. While some phishing attempts are poorly done, others are done very well. Some scammers produce counterfeits that look like the real thing. In fact, you can only discern them as counterfeits by looking very closely at them. Here's a couple examples on the screen. There's support at amazon.ca, but notice there that the O in support is actually not an O, it's a zero. And if you click on that, it won't go to where you think it's going. It'll go to a completely different link. Or the second one here, support at amazon.ca, it's all underlined, except if you look carefully, the T in support is not underlined. That means that will send you to a completely different link. You see, when it comes to the realm of counterfeits, if you're not paying careful attention, you can be fooled. And therein lies an important principle. What's true when it comes to the realm of emails and texts is equally true when it comes to the realm of Jesus of Nazareth. Just like there are false emails and false texts out there in the world, there are also false versions of Jesus out there in the world. There are versions of Jesus that, on the surface, look like the real thing. However, upon closer inspection, these versions of Jesus are exposed as counterfeits. Now, with that in mind, we're beginning today what we've entitled the Counterfeit Jesus series. Over the next few weeks, we're going to look at six common counterfeits, six false versions of Jesus that are in our world today. Six false versions that, on the surface, may look like the real Jesus. However, when we look closer, we will discover that they are scams. They're phonies. They're counterfeits of the real Jesus of Nazareth. Now, why are we taking the time to do this? Why is it so important that we point out these counterfeits? Well, pointing out a phishing scam has everything to do with your life's savings. Pointing out a counterfeit Jesus has everything to do with saving your life. Well, with that in mind, over the next few weeks, we're going to hold the following six counterfeits up to the light. Next week, we're going to examine what we're calling the anti-evangelism Jesus. This is the Jesus that tells you all religions are basically the same. This is the Jesus that tells you it doesn't really matter what you believe. This is the Jesus that tells you it's all about sincerity and good deeds. Then, we'll investigate the anti-religious Jesus. This Jesus is kind of the opposite of the anti-evangelism Jesus, because this Jesus is against all forms of organized religion. 
This Jesus discourages you from being part of a church, a body of believers. This Jesus encourages you to only have a private, personal, just Jesus and me kind of faith. After that, we'll investigate the socialist Jesus. This is the Jesus that hates money and hates the owning of private property. This is the Jesus that teaches that possessing wealth and owning things is evil. After investigating the socialist Jesus, we will then meet the judge not Jesus. This is the Jesus that apparently only had one thing to say when he walked the earth, judge not. If you ever suggest that someone or something is morally wrong, the judge not Jesus will be summoned to repeat the only statement it appears he ever uttered. Following that, we will then set our sights upon the health and wealth Jesus. This version of Jesus denies that anyone should ever be sick or poor or have any problems whatsoever. And if you are sick, if you are poor, if you have any problems, it's your fault. It's all because somehow, somewhere in your life, you either disobeyed or failed to trust the health and wealth Jesus. Now, let's pause here for a moment. I'm wondering, as I've been going through this list, have you found yourself getting a bit defensive or confused or agitated at me over the last couple of moments? Have you found yourself wanting to shout out at me, or maybe you have shouted out at the screen, to defend one of the versions of Jesus that I've mentioned? If so, that may be a sign that you have fallen for a counterfeit. Well, with that as our introduction, let's turn to the very first counterfeit Jesus that we're going to investigate. Today, we're beginning this series by looking into the version we're referring to as the everyman Jesus. This is the Jesus who is exactly like us, just better and a more accomplished version of us. Nobody knows this, but my wife Jan, when she was a younger teen, was involved in a team that represented Canada overseas in Europe, Finland and Sweden. And uh, she was used for a teaching video in Finland where she was showing people how to properly stop on skates. And so this, there's a video of Jan circulating somewhere out there in Finland. She's showing young women how to stop properly when skating. Well, According to the everyman version of Jesus, what my wife Jan was to the young skaters of Finland, Jesus was to all of humanity. According to the everyman version, the purpose of this version of Jesus was to be nothing more than an example to all of us. His life was all about the how-to. His life was all about the do things this way, live life this way. Now, the teachers of the everyman version of Jesus focus upon the passages in the Bible where the humanity of Jesus is on full display. Passages that describe how Jesus experienced a natural childbirth. Jesus went through the normal growth stages. Jesus became physically weary. Jesus got hungry. Jesus got thirsty. Jesus experienced the suffering that comes with temptation. Now, the purveyors of the everyman version of Jesus place these passages before us because they see that as the reason for Jesus' life. How Jesus handled these common experiences of the everyday man and the everyday woman are held up for us as the focus of Jesus' mission and the purpose of Jesus' life. Hey, you're feeling weary? You're feeling frustrated? You're feeling agitated? That's okay, because Jesus felt the same way, and here's how Jesus handled such moments in his life. Now, for those who hold to the everyman version of Jesus, that is the sum total of his life. He was exactly like us, only a better, more accomplished version of us. And that's all. That's it. According to the everyman version of Jesus, there was nothing more to Jesus' life than being a really good example for the rest of us to follow. According to the everyman version of Jesus, the whole thing about Jesus' death, well, the trial, the cross, all of that, that was all a misunderstanding. People simply misinterpreted what Jesus was teaching. Okay, you say, but what about the resurrection of Jesus? Well, according to the everyman version, Jesus didn't literally rise from the dead. Jesus figuratively rose from the dead. 
Meaning, they'll say, since his example is still with us, in a sense, Jesus is still with us. Got that? Hmm. So then, what exactly is the problem with this version of Jesus? I mean, why are we classifying the everyman Jesus as a counterfeit Jesus? I mean, isn't it true that Jesus was a man, a human being just like us? Yep, it is true. Jesus of Nazareth was truly a man. Well, isn't it true that Jesus was an example for all of us? Isn't it true that we should follow in his footsteps? Isn't it true that we should believe what Jesus believed, teach what he taught, live like he lived, and love like he loved? Yes, it's true. All of that is true. So what's the problem? Why are we classifying the everyman Jesus as a counterfeit Jesus? A little boy with tears in his eyes brought his pet turtle to his mother. Mommy, the boy cried, my turtle is dead. The mother kissed her son on his forehead and she said, that's all right, son. We're going to wrap him up in tissue paper. We'll place him in a box and then we'll have a ceremony in the backyard. And afterwards, you and I are going to go out and we're going to get your favorite ice cream. The little boy says, my favorite ice cream. He wipes the tears from his eyes. Oh, thank you, mommy. Thank you. And then just as he was saying that, the mother noticed the turtle moved. She said, son, I just saw your turtle move. Your turtle isn't dead after all. Suddenly disappointed, the little boy said, can we kill it? I believe that the proponents of the everyman version of Jesus have a lot in common with that little boy. Both are determined to do whatever it takes to get the outcome that they want. You see, to hold to the everyman version of Jesus, you must ignore 50% of the reality regarding Jesus. I'll show you what I mean. Let's take a moment to look at the real Jesus. The New Testament writers, the eyewitnesses to Jesus' life and teachings, did not deny that Jesus was a human being. Yes, Jesus did experience a natural childbirth, the normal growth stages, physical weariness, hunger, thirst. Yes, Jesus did experience the suffering that comes with temptation. The writers of the New Testament fully acknowledged that Jesus was human. However, they didn't stop there. They acknowledged that Jesus was human, but they emphasized that Jesus was not merely human. Jesus was a man, but Jesus was more than a man. Jesus was God who added the experience of humanity to his experience of divinity. So yes, Jesus can be used as an example to us in how we should live as human beings, but that's only half the story. The truth is that Jesus' ability to live at the level that he lived was because Jesus was more than merely human. Jesus was God in the form of a human. And this reality is what gave Jesus the power to live the way he lived. John, an eyewitness to the life of Jesus, put it this way. He wrote, in the beginning was the word. That was a title for Jesus. And the word was with God and the word was God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Yes, Jesus was human, John is saying, but Jesus was more than merely human. Jesus was God who, like a person putting on a coat, he added humanity to his already existing divinity. Jesus cloaked his divinity with humanity. Jesus was more than a better, more accomplished version of us. Jesus was truly divine and Jesus was truly human. Both. A biblical writer named Paul threaded this needle well. In a famous passage found in the letter he wrote to the church in the ancient city of Philippi, Paul held Jesus up as an example of how we should live as humans, while at the same time pointing out that Jesus was more than human. In this passage, Paul teaches about humility, and he uses Jesus as the perfect example of humility. Paul says, look, look to what Jesus did as your example. Look at how Jesus humbled himself. Paul does say that, but he says more than that. Let's read it together. Paul wrote, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, or instead, 
He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now, do you see the word nature in that passage? Underline it if you have your Bible open or if you have your outline. This letter was originally written in ancient Greek, and the word translated nature is the ancient Greek word morphe. It means the essential essence of a thing. It means the essential substance of a thing. You are what your nature is. You're defined by your nature. If you have the nature of a rock, you are a rock. You cannot have the nature of a thing without being that thing. Well, with that in mind, reread what Paul just said about Jesus. In your relationships with each other, with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature, God. According to the Apostle Paul, Jesus is, by very nature, God. So how did that fact impact Jesus being an example of humility in Paul's mind? Read again what Paul says. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, didn't consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Instead, he made himself nothing by taking the nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death. Yeah, even death on a cross. The story is told of a woman who was called to be a witness at a trial in a small town. Now, this woman was known for being the town gossip. She was in everyone's business. Well, the prosecuting attorney called her to the stand, and after swearing her in, he began his examination. He looked at the woman and he said, ma'am, do you know who I am? She looked at him and she said, yes, I know who you are. You're Mr. Garcia. And I am very disappointed in you, Mr. Garcia. You are greedy and you treat everyone around you like dirt. Shaken by this, because it was true, the lawyer then pointed to the defense attorney and said, Ma'am, do you know who she is? And the witness looked over at the defense attorney and said, Of course, I know who she is. That's Ms. Kim. And I'm very disappointed in her as well. She is a heavy drinker and she's a notorious gambler. At that, the judge called both of the attorneys to approach the bench. When they stood before him, the judge leaned over, scowled at them, and whispered, Don't you dare ask her if she knows who I am. Have you had someone pull the old do-you-know-who-I-am card on you? Someone who tried to use their position in life to gain an advantage for themselves? In this passage, Paul is saying that Jesus refused to use that card. In this passage, Paul is saying that Jesus did not use the fact that he was God, with all the rights and privileges that go with it, as a way of avoiding difficulties or getting what he wanted. Instead, Jesus chose to set aside all of the privileges that came with his divinity. Instead, Jesus chose to add the experience of being human to his ongoing experience of being divine, including the experience of dying on a cross in our place. This is a perfect illustration of humility, and this is also a perfect illustration of why the everyman Jesus is a counterfeit Jesus. It's because the everyman Jesus was nothing more than a really good guy. The everyman Jesus was nothing more than a really good example. But as Paul has just pointed out, the real Jesus is much more than that. The real Jesus is the creator of the universe who took on the form of humanity, lived in our midst, died in our place, rose as our redeemer. Which brings us to today's big idea where we sum it all up. Here it is. The real Jesus was not every man. The real Jesus is truly God. The real Jesus was not every man. The real Jesus is truly God. So why does this matter? I mean, why does it matter that we renounce the counterfeit everyman Jesus and accept the real Jesus? Have you ever been caught with a counterfeit in your hands? I have. 
Many years ago, one of staff members in a congregation I was serving at that time said, Pastor Darren, it's your birthday. I'm going to take you to a Blue Jay game. I said, oh, great. Thank you. I was living in the Toronto area at the time. So we went down to what was then known as the Sky Dome. It was the first year Sky Dome had been opened. And uh, and so we go there and I said, so you got the tickets? He said, actually, no, I didn't buy them ahead of time, but I'll, I'll just buy one from somebody. You know, they're always selling them out on the street around the Sky Dome. I'll, I'll get one off us. Um, someone who's selling them there. So, all right, whatever. They usually cost more if you do that. No problem. This is my treat, he said. So we saw somebody who's selling tickets on the sidewalk. He buys a couple tickets. We go in, we walk down to our seats. Great seats, like about 10 rows behind home plate. We get to our seats and there's two people sitting in our seats. <laughs> and my friend says to the people in the seats, excuse me, uh, you're in our seats. These are the tickets here. And the guy in the seat says, no, those are stolen. He said, you bought those off of somebody outside, right? And my friend said, yeah, we did. Yeah, mine got stolen in the mail. You got stolen tickets. And he took us up to the police officer <laughs> in the lobby. And the cops saw the tickets and said, yeah, you got some counterfeit tickets there. And we weren't able to sit in our seats. Counterfeits don't cut it when it counts. That day... I was unwittingly depending upon a counterfeit ticket to gain access into a ball game. Are you depending upon a counterfeit Jesus to gain access into the presence of God? If you are, you are setting yourself up for the shock of your life. Counterfeits have no power, especially before the throne of God on the other side of the grave. Take my advice while you still can. Toss aside the counterfeit and grab hold of what's real. I wonder how many people are listening to me right now and you find yourself in a bit of a strange place. Intellectually, you don't believe the everyman Jesus is true. But practically, you're living as though the everyman Jesus is true. You read about Jesus, but you don't reach out to Jesus. You rely upon the power of his example, but you don't call upon the power of his presence. You believe that he once walked the earth before you, but you don't live as though he's now walking along with you. If that's you, let me remind you of the words of Paul, a famous first century leader in the Church of Jesus Christ. Describing the dynamic experience of life in Christ, Paul wrote, and I quote, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but power. As you finish today, may from this day forward, may you not just be talking about Jesus, but experiencing Jesus every day of your life. Experience the power of his presence. Experience a relationship with Jesus through the Spirit of God. Don't just follow his example. Live according to the power of his presence. Let's pray together. God, I thank you that you understand our need. You understand our predicament. And I thank you that you didn't just come as an example to us, though you were and are an example, but you came as a sacrifice for us. You paid the penalty of our sin. And you live today by your Spirit in our midst. And so you're not just some past example. You are a present power, a present life within us. So may we experience that dynamic of your life, of your spirit dwelling within us today. I pray for every follower of Jesus watching me right now, that you will experience the dynamic of the living Christ, the living spirit of God dwelling within you, empowering you, giving you life and hope and strength and wisdom. If you're watching me right now, and perhaps you've been following the counterfeit every man Jesus, or maybe you've just never reached out to accept the gift that Jesus has offered you. Right now, I want to give you the opportunity to do that. Pray this prayer with me as though I was praying on your behalf. Just agree with me. God, I acknowledge my rebellion. I acknowledge my waywardness. I admit I have not been living according to the example that you've set or the design that you have for my life. That's called sin. And there's nothing I can do to scrub away the sin, the fact of the sin in my life. I don't want to live this way any longer. So I accept your gift that you purchased through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. I accept your gift of forgiveness and eternal life. 
come and live within me now by your spirit and begin to transform me from this moment forward. In the name of the resurrected Jesus, I pray, amen. If you just prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Tell somebody about this decision you made, preferably somebody who you know is a follower of Jesus. Or you could also text the number on the screen right now and one of our pastoral staff will text you back. We're not gonna scam you. We're not gonna go fishing after you like I spoke about earlier today. We're simply gonna text you back once and offer our services to you in any way that we can. Well, thank you for being with us on week one of the Counterfeit Jesus series. I hope you join us next time when we're gonna continue with the anti-evangelism Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for being with us at Broadway Church today. Thank you for joining us at Church Online this week. If you have any prayer needs or requests, please text the number on the screen. Or if you're new to Broadway and you're looking to connect deeper, scan the QR code on the screen and a pastor will reply and help you get connected to a place where you can best serve and grow. Here are the discussion questions you can use based on today's sermon. As you look ahead to what's coming up in this series, which counterfeit Jesus do you see most people following? Why do you think Jesus refused to use the privileges of being God while he was on earth? It's possible for someone to believe in the real Jesus, but live as if they're following the everyman Jesus. How have you seen this play out? Every counterfeit has a bit of truth. What seeds of truth are ingrained in the everyman Jesus? Why is it important that Jesus is truly human and truly God? We pray that by engaging deeper into today's message, it will help you along in your spiritual walk. Lastly, don't forget to check out broadwaychurch.com for all the things going on at the church and have yourself a great week. Broadway, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Desiree and I am one of the pastors here. And as you guys can see, we have a very special guest with us today. So why don't you go ahead and tell us who you are and what you do around here? Um, my name is Hannah Vicente and I'm one of the youth students here at Broadway as well as one of the student leads. Amazing, and Hannah, how long have you been attending Broadway? I've been going to Broadway for my whole life. Your whole life, since you were a little baby? Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Well, thank you for being here. And Broadway, we have a ton of stuff happening here for you and your families. So why don't you check these things out? Alpha is a 10-week course designed for you to explore life, faith, and God in a fun and safe environment. Attending Alpha is different. Yep, there is no pressure, no follow-up, and no charge unless you want to pay for the optional meal beforehand. If you want to explore Christianity with us, please register online. The course began last week, but it is not too late to join. Broadway Fitness is a free class that will take place on Tuesday nights at the Port Coquitlam campus. Make sure to bring a water bottle and wear clothes that let you move and sweat. This is a great opportunity to invite a friend, neighbor, or family member to connect with our church. Register online. Kids Church in Vancouver is growing a lot and we need your help. We're looking for people to serve in all roles, both at our Sunday morning services and our Wednesday night kids club. We're also looking for people who have a heart to serve children with disabilities as part of our Broadway Buddies team. And don't worry, you don't have to teach or be in front of the class for this volunteer role. Calling all men. If you have been looking to build strong friendships with other men, this event is for you. On April 13th, we're going to be having our men's breakfast. Join us for an amazing breakfast with tofu bacon and turkey bacon. Just kidding, there's gonna be real bacon and afterwards we're going to have an optional dodgeball tournament. The best part is that the breakfast only costs $12. You can register online at the Automated Giving Center. On April 11th at our Vancouver campus, our young adults are having a community night and the theme is Throwback Thursday. Come dress as your childhood self or in a style from the past and join us for an awesome night filled with nostalgic games, a retro photo booth and lots of time to connect with other young adults. We're also providing a full meal, so please register and pay on the website. All young adults from all campuses are invited. We are hiring. We are looking for a full-time pastor at our Port Coquitlam campus. This person will be in charge of overseeing our worship and tech ministry and will be involved in the day-to-day -day ministries of the church, including community outreach. If this role interests you, please check out the job description on the website under the Join Our Team tab. 
If you miss anything that we said, you can always visit our website, broadwaychurch.com, for more information on all of our ministries and events. And while you're there, make sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.